Hey, I'm Jerry, and welcome to my new electronic dungeon. I just moved recently, and I think I need to christen the new space with a short circuits. Um, so the other day, I was shopping at HSC Surplus, and I saw one of these large um, electronic uh, sorting bins full of components, and they had it marked down the whole case for like $10 and it was full of all kinds of really cool ICs and potentiometers and various parts so I picked it up and I thought it'd be fun to see if I could build some kind of fun circuit out of just primarily what I could find in this um, this parts bin so I decided that it'd be really fun to make a simple direct digital synthesizer so I can make audio frequencies with some 74HC um, 4060s. They're long duration counters. They have a crystal input or they can have an RC um, input to generate the, the base frequency. And then they have a bunch of flip-flops that are toggled together that form a ripple counter. And then a certain um, set of those pins off of the, the flip-flops come out that you can use um, in your external circuit. Um, so this is, I'm saying it's part one because there's a lot to direct digital synthesis and we'll see what we can get in this, um, this segment. So here's the basic circuit. So we have, these are my papers here, we have the ripple counter and it has a time base so it has an oscillator which um, it's either, either a crystal or an RC constant. In the particular circuit I built today it's an RC constant so we can have fun and make a, a theremin type sound out of it. I took seven of the bits, which were continuous. Um, you know, there's discontinuity in the, the bits. Um, they skip some bits that they output from the actual chip. So I could get seven in a row, and then I fed that into a flash EEPROM, and that is generating addresses that are going to feed out values that are going to be fed into an R2R resistor ladder that will generate our analog waveforms. So with this, since it's programmable, we can make arbitrary frequencies and we can store multiple frequencies by taking the upper bits of the flash and running that to a resistor uh, or with pull-up resistors and then you have a switch that you can pull down the different bits in a binary. Um, uh, uh, you can select different um, banks with a binary uh, 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 switch. That's what I was looking for. All right, so when you're storing these values in the, the EEPROM, you might be trying to make a, uh, say, a sawtooth in this instance, and a, saw, a real sawtooth would be a very smooth transition to its maximum amplitude, and then it would drop down, and then it would start back up again. But since you have a very limited number of samples, and it, it depends on how fast your oscillator is and how deep your, your memory is or your flash, and how fast your flash is too, to how many of these um, values you can store. So you're going to have a certain amount of quantization depending on the frequency of your oscillator and the resolution of your um, digital to analog converter. So here's a schematic of the simple R2R resistor ladder that I used. Um, in this particular configuration, you use a resistor value that comes out of the data pin of the flash, which is two times the resistor value of these bridge resistors. So if by maintaining this ratio and then having your your 2R resistor hooked to ground at the bottom, you end up with a fairly, fairly linear um, digital to analog converter. And then it's, it's up to you what you want to do on the output of this. You may want to uh, put an op amp to buffer this so you can match impedance to your audio system or an emitter follower and in this case I was just being really lazy and I just put I capacitively coupled it and it works fine for what we're doing today alright so here's a, a little bit closer look at the counter and how it hooks to the EEPROM uh, so on the EEPROM or the flash I tied the output enable and the chip enable low, which is their active low, so it's always outputting data. And then I took the ripple counter output 
and fed that directly into the lower seven bits of the address and then the upper address um, bits, some of them, uh, I hooked to pull-up resistors and then I had some of these really nifty um, rotary encoders that are used for SCSI termination. So you click a switch and there's a rotary cam inside and it has different traces that get connected and it provides a binary output. And then the common uh, lead on the output for this cam that moves around, I hooked that to ground so I could switch between banks. So in this particular one I only have three bits of banks that I can switch between, which gives me seven different arbitrary waveforms. The rest of the the address lines I've grounded those and um, you could use that to make more waveforms if you like or use a different counter that uses more bits. There's another thing I did is because I, uh, I didn't want to rely on the counter just overflowing. I wanted to be able to stop the counter and restart it again at any point so I took this, the data bit 7 out and fed that into the reset pin of the counter. So anytime that I use hex 80 in my my data code that I'm writing into the EEPROM, I can reset the counter so I can have arbitrary length up to 127 entries. Um, so before we move into taking a look at the circuit, let's take a look at the ripple counter. There's some hazards in ripple counters. You've got to be careful. Since it's a ripple propagation down through the flip-flops and it's not synchronous, as a clock pulse comes into the least significant bits, it's going to ripple through and you're going to get glitches. Um, this isn't too much of a problem with audio frequencies, but if you were trying to design a very high frequency, high accuracy um, DDS, you would want to register these outputs, put flip-flop to get them back onto your master clock domain or you'll end up with very high frequency glitches in your output. Um, and the audio range and how slow our EEPROMs are, I really don't see any glitches at all because the EEPROM is very slow. So, alright, let's take a look at the circuit. Here's the circuit right here. There's the flash prom here. It's huge. It's a W29CO40, but it's just had a ton of them. Here is the uh, 4060 long duration counter. I have an RC constant on the back and um, part of my RC constant is a, a CDS cell. It's a a light sensitive resistor and then there, this is the SCSI terminator that I can switch up and down so if I apply power to this we can hear a tone okay so now we have a sawtooth um, tone coming out of this so this was values that I just go to maximum I, I programmed it to go to maximum uh, amplitude and then just slowly come back down if I change it to this, now we have a sawtooth. So this is a direct count up to maximum amplitude and it drops clear off to zero and back down. And I'd like to show that you can have very complicated waveforms. This is a waveform that happens to have square wave and sawtooth combined. So maybe I'll zoom in on that and see if we can get that. Yeah, I think you can see it there that it's a combination of sawtooth and square wave. Now let's take a look at what the audio spectrum looks like when we have these different type of waveforms. So let's go back to the triangle wave, which is close to, it approximates the sine wave. And if we look at the waterfall, this shows frequency spectrum, higher frequencies to the right, lower frequencies to the left. And by the waveforms that we have, we can have more or less overtones. So we can see in here there's two sharp lines on this triangle wave. There's a third faint one here. Let's go ahead and switch up to a triangle wave. Now if we look at the triangle wave, it's approximately the same frequency, but many, many more overtones. And then if we go to a, the most this complicated waveform that's combination of square and triangle, there's just tons of frequencies here. Now, since as a CDS cell, I thought I would just show you with this little light board that has some blinking LEDs on it, um, what kind of sounds we can get out of it. Wow. Thanks for watching. Bye.